700 Club, the U.S. Secretary of State delivered this message to Israeli leaders yesterday. The only path to lasting peace in the Middle East is a Palestinian state. Secretary Blinken did stand in full support of Israel against charges of genocide. He called out South Africa for their meritless and galling accusations. CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl has more. Secretary of State Blinken met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and military leaders to discuss what he says is needed for regional peace. As I told the Prime Minister, every partner that I met on this trip said that they're ready to support a lasting solution that ends the long-running cycle of violence and ensures Israel's security. But they underscored that this can only come through a regional approach that includes a pathway to a Palestinian state. Israeli leaders did not publicly respond, but they're opposed to a Palestinian state. Blinken stood with the Jewish state against South Africa's claim to the International Court of Justice that Israel is committing genocide. Moreover, the charge of genocide is meritless. It's particularly galling, given that those who are attacking Israel, Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, as well as their support of Iran, continue to openly call for the annihilation of Israel and the mass murder of Jews. He also said Palestinian civilians should be allowed to return to northern Gaza when the time is right and not pressured to leave. Israel says there needs to be major changes in Gaza after Hamas is dealt with, including the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, or UNRWA. UNRWA is an organization of the United Nations that is a complete cover-up for Hamas activities, okay, and terrorist activities. Um, Hamas has taken over this organization. And so we knew this for a while. But now, after the 7th of October, we have to take their masks off and tell the world what UNRWA is doing. Knesset member Sharon Haskell convened a meeting of the caucus to reform UNRWA on Tuesday. They are inciting and educating children to violence and hatred. They're teaching them martyrdom, how to be child soldiers. That's their education system. It's based on radical Islam. And, you know, the international community is paying for it. UNRWA began in 1949 after hundreds of thousands of Arabs fled their homes during Israel's War of Independence. It's the only UN refugee agency made for a specific group of people and including their descendants forever. UNRWA has been a turbocharged engine of terror. Uh, coming out of Gaza, which has become a forward base for the IRGC and the Iranian regime. Dan Diker, president of the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs, says there needs to be international supervision of UNRWA led by the U.S. It's the Iranian regime that is mobilizing UNRWA with its Hamas proxy to incite to the murdering of Jews and Israelis to, um, to carry out acts of terror. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem. Well, it's time for UNRWA to be de defunded, and please keep in mind your tax dollars are going to fund UNRWA. President Trump stopped U.S. payments to UNRWA, uh, and President Biden reinstated them. They've been going on from administration after administration since 1948 until the Trump administration. It's time for it to end because it's quite clear that all it is doing is funding terrorism. It's providing staff salaries to Hamas terrorists. It's providing funding for the building of tunnels and rockets. These, these things have to stop. The, the uh, indoctrination of children, all happening in UNRWA schools. And so let's wake up to that and say no more. In terms of a two-state solution, I think the State Department is absolutely dreaming because the Palestinians don't want two states. They want one state, and they want to call it the state of Palestine. The world needs to recognize that's a brand new thing. It's never existed before. There was no Palestinian state ever. 
How did we get the name Palestine? Well, it comes from Emperor Hadrian. He was responding to a Jewish revolt against Roman rule all the way back in uh, 130 to 135 AD. After the revolt, he decided, I want to wipe out the Jewish people. I want to make sure they can never exist again. So he did three horrible things. Number one, he plowed the Temple Mount so the foundations could never be built on again. There could never be another Jewish temple in Jerusalem. Number two, he destroyed their genealogies so they could no longer trace who are part of the priesthood, the Kohen, who are part of the royalty uh, the, the, from the tribe of Judah. He, he intentionally wanted to wipe out their history, so he destroyed the genealogies. And then third, he renamed the country, so it would no longer be called Israel. Israel, he chose the term Syria Palestina, and he p particularly took Palestina from the Philistines, the traditional enemies of Israel. That's the real history here, uh, and, and anything else is some kind of invented fiction. To call is Israeli citizens somehow colonizers from Europe, that they don't have any traditional ties to the land, the, the Jewish population has, ha hasn't existed, uh, is absolute fiction. But that's what the Palestinians teach their children. And they teach their children, we want to be free from the river to the sea. That means Israel wiped off the map. Let's not ignore that. If you want to have peace, you have to make sure the other side wants to have peace. And Palestine, the Palestinians, do not want it. Well, from threats against synagogues to calls for genocide on college campuses, anti-Semitism is now raging in America. One of the largest Jewish groups in New York City is calling on leaders in the U.S. to stand against the rising hostility. CBN's Brody Carter sat down with the executive vice president of the Orthodox Union. Nestled in the financial district of Lower Manhattan is the world's largest organization serving Orthodox Jews. If you've ever indulged in Oreo cookies or Hershey's chocolate, You've eaten food certified by the Orthodox Union's Kosher Service, which approves over a million products and 70 percent of America's foods labeled as kosher. The organization also supports synagogues, advocates for the disabled, and leads the Jewish Learning Initiative, a college program to engage Jewish students and elevate religious experience. As anti-Israel activists call on the United States to abandon Israel, the Orthodox Union is taking on a new effort, protecting its people. Rather than providing them with a home on campus, they're providing them with a fortress, a place where they can feel safe and protected from the all too frequent hostility that they experience. Amid the fallout from October 7th and ensuing war, Rabbi Moshe Hauer has become a leading voice for the Orthodox Jews from national television to Capitol Hill supporting Jewish college students. Once upon a time, Jews were not admitted to these campuses. Today, we've come a long way. Jews are admitted to every campus. But today, unlike a short time ago, that admission introduces them to an environment where they experience fear and hostility. The Orthodox Union and Rabbi Hauer hosted family members of released hostages, highlighting and sharing the pain felt throughout the worldwide Jewish community until each hostage comes home. Any Jew, any serious Jew, is deeply aware of their history. What we recite every Passover at the Seder, that in each and every generation they stand up against us to destroy us. Rabbi Hauer says Jews and others saw America as the exception, a land where every identity should feel safe. Now, in a time when hate can feel stronger than hope, the rabbi pulled strength from his faith. We came to the world in order to be able to bring light. So we're not going to run away from darkness. We can't run away from darkness. We have to double down. We have to know and be confident that ultimately the light will shine. In New York City, Brody Carter, CBN News. That is a wonderful, wonderful way to put it. Let there be light. If you take that as a commandment for you as an individual, 
that you will be a light to the world. Let there be light and be that light to the world. The, the counter question is, what can darkness do to it? And the answer quite clearly, darkness can't do anything. It may seem like a dark time in America. It may seem like a dark time in Israel. But let us shine and let us be a light to the world and a light to the nations. Welcome back to the 700 Club for more top stories from CBN News. Millions of Americans are feeling the effects of storms slamming the country. The East Coast seeing severe thunderstorms, heavy rain and tornadoes, while the Midwest is getting hit with snow and wind. CBN's Wendy Griffith reports. The Potomac River in Washington, D.C. started to spill its banks as a line of thunderstorms pounded the East Coast, slamming the area with high wind and rain. Areas from D.C. to New England braced for potential flooding. One homeowner in Westchester County, New York, moving some belongings upstairs just in case. I'm scared. I'm nervous. I, I hate this. Multiple tornadoes coming out of the line of storms. In Panama City Beach, Florida, from the air, you can see the damage. Roofs ripped off. This marina severely damaged. Mark Elliott lives just a few blocks away. When the hail started and we saw all the lightning and saw all the green and, and the lightning knew it was a storm. And then it uh, went over the house, knocking the fence down. And As the storm moved north, deaths reported in several states, including North Carolina, where one person was killed and two critically injured when a tornado tore through this mobile home park in Claremont. In the Midwest, it's heavy snow. Parts of Iowa, Wisconsin, Nebraska, Kansas, and Illinois now digging out. I-70 west of Salina, Kansas was shut down. And in Iowa, the heavy snow making it tough for candidates on the campaign trail. Just five days ahead of the Iowa caucuses. We're going to be there, you know, no matter what. The wild weather knocking out power for more than 800,000 customers. And much of the country is bracing for more extreme weather as another major storm is now beginning to impact the Pacific Northwest before it makes its move east. Wendy Griffith, CBN News. Thanks, Wendy. Wild weather indeed. Everyone stay safe out there. Now to the controversy surrounding Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin's previously undisclosed hospital stay. The Pentagon revealing Tuesday that Austin is being treated for prostate cancer, the first time the public or President Biden has been made aware of his condition. The secretary has been hospitalized since New Year's Day after complications following a minor procedure. Though admitted to the ICU, neither the White House nor his deputy at the Pentagon, who temporarily assumed authority, was informed of his condition for several days. Austin since resuming his duties from his hospital bed. The White House has ordered a review of protocols for notification and transferring authority to subordinates for cabinet officials. Well, after Christmas and New Year's, America is experiencing a spike in seasonal sickness. The CDC says the number of people suffering from respiratory illnesses is high in two-thirds of the United States and rising. CBN medical reporter Lori Johnson tells us what's driving the surge and how you can protect yourself and your loved ones. Doctors typically see a spike in cases of respiratory viruses like the flu, COVID, and RSV after the holidays because of all the travel and in-person gatherings in close quarters. Doctors warn the post-holiday surge may continue for weeks. It's probably going to get worse before it gets better. Testing is the best way to determine which infection a patient has because symptoms often overlap. They include sore throat, cough, fever, and body aches. Severe symptoms include difficulty breathing and chest pain. We think that influenza probably um, has a more sudden onset after you contract the, the virus uh, within usually one to maybe five, four or five days. COVID-19 symptoms might start anywhere between two and maybe 14 days after you contract the virus. For some viruses, doctors can prescribe pills that have been proven effective, but the drugs need to be taken as soon as possible. With influenza, we have an antiviral medication called Tamiflu, uh, which is only helpful if it started within 48 hours of the beginning of your illness. For COVID-19, there is an oral medication called Paxlovid, which can be started within five days of the onset of your symptoms. 
RSV, on the other hand, is not treatable with any prescription medication. So RSV is a virus that many of us are familiar with, unfortunately, that can can really hit the little kids hard, the little ones, the infants, um, hospitalizations happen every single year from RSV. Doctors say parents should take their child to the doctor if they're not drinking enough, have bluish lips or fingernails, or have short, rapid breathing. You might see little ones where you can see the outline of their ribs, and we call those some retractions. You can see their muscles working extra to help them breathe. Fortunately, most RSV cases are mild. Pediatricians often recommend children's acetaminophen or ibuprofen for comfort. In general, the cough medicines we don't recommend across the board. They have other um, components in them that aren't necessarily useful or helpful for kids. One that is useful is over-the-counter honey for um, a year or more. Sometimes that can soothe the throat and give them a little relief. Doctors say regardless of age or ailment, we can prevent the spread of respiratory viruses by washing our hands often, covering coughs and sneezes, and staying home when sick. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Some helpful tips. Thank you, Lori. Well, the winter weather isn't stopping the spread of the gospel in one of the country's coldest states. In North Dakota, the Global Ministry Pulse has launched a two-year evangelism campaign. CBN's Mark Martin spoke with the founder about the effort to reach all generations. He's alive tonight in Fargo-Moorhead. He's alive. Pulse North Dakota has an ambitious goal, reach every person in the state with the gospel over the next two years. That's close to 800,000 people. This is us coming back home. There's leaders here that are, you know, they've been tilling the soil, they've been working, they've been praying. And I would just say it's harvest time, not only in North Dakota, but I believe in our nation right now. North Dakota is the home state of evangelist Nick Hall. He says he has a heart for it and has been praying for an outreach to happen there for 20 years. The goal is to unleash young evangelists to share the gospel all over the state in towns of all sizes. Reaching all ages, all demographics, you know, it might not be big for you, but man, it's big for that town. It's big for that individual that comes out. Hall says 200 young evangelists will take part in the campaign. We want to hit every nursing home, every prison, every juvenile center, every recovery center, and uh, really just sharing the good news of Jesus and hopefully raising up a generation to do the same. 22-year-old Jessica Sanchez is one of those evangelists sharing the gospel. You know, I've never been to North Dakota before, um, but when I did go, I was really amazed about um, you know, people just were coming up to me and they were like, my my daughter needs God and I don't know how to reach her. And and she's young and and she doesn't think that she needs Jesus. But then she looks at, you know, people who are passionate about Jesus. Pulse North Dakota kicked off in November with the Reason Tour, a family Christmas experience. It involves sharing the true meaning of Christmas giving people the chance to respond personally, and then plugging them into local churches and ministries. We've been going across. We've seen thousands of people through these events come to know Jesus. Uh, every night on this tour, hundreds are responding. Every night, people are catching a vision for reaching the state. Paul Ninus is a North Dakota pastor working alongside Pulse. But I also uh, hope it, it fires up our churches and it, it brings down some of the walls that may have existed historically as we think about how we relate to each other and we can just be united in mission. A mission to reach North Dakota with the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ. Mark Martin, CBN News. Thanks, Mark. Gordon, I know this is a general election year, but this is one campaign that's easy to get behind. Uh, I kind of wish it wasn't an election year. I'm tired of politics, but I'm not tired of Jesus. And he is the answer. He's the answer to every human need. And when you approach it, let, let's have campaigns for him. Uh, let, let's, let's say, let's preach the gospel. Let's come together. Uh, and whether that's in North Dakota or in your own neighborhood, just sort of strategize. What's, what's it going to take and, and how can we do it and, and what's needed? And let's get people together. Let's get unified through that, for that goal. And it's through that unity that you're going to see incredible change. 
So, Ashley, I'll, I'll ask you the same question that that mother asked. How do I reach this next generation? Well, I think, you know, what the Pulse movement is doing in, in North Dakota, I think, is exactly how you reach the next generation. You evangelize, you go out, you talk to people, you go to different churches. I think it's really cool. Imagine if every... If a, if a person or a ministry in every state did the same thing and had the same goal of reaching everyone within that state. Well, that's what we're supposed to do. I mean, that's, that's a complete <laughs> revival. So I think, yeah. you know, that's something that we should, we should look to. But the next generation, I mean, I know there's a lot of people who might feel hopeless about the next generation, but I'm here to tell you I've witnessed the younger generation, and there are many of them who love Jesus and who are on fire for the gospel and who are spreading the gospel to their generation. Amen. So. Yeah, that's good news. From the chosen to Hawaii Five-0, Yasmin Abutsami is making her rounds in the in the entertainment world. Recently, I got the chance to visit the set of the chosen and to get an inside look into her character, Rayma. I am willing to do this on my own and follow out a custom. I know, but this is different. Everything about it has been. And besides, I want your visit to be successful. <laughs> I will see you in Joppa. <laughs> okay, well, Yasmin, thank you so much for chatting with me. Yes, I'm such a fan of the show, but also a fan of your character, Rayma. What is it like playing a romantic kind of role right I love now? It. On a Bible based like a, yeah. show. Like, this is We're so in a cool. rom com. <laughs> a rom com. Much. Yes. <laughs> Can she what is, yeah, what is it like? Um, you <laughs> it's know. really it's so lighthearted, yeah. honestly, in such a in such a heavy, it could be potentially heavy show, you know? It's fun. I think it's not just fun for me and yeah. Joey, who plays Thomas, but I think it's really fun for everybody else because it obviously, is. you know, they're, these guys are giving us advice, the gals are giving me advice, Jesus is over here giving us <laughs> advice. <laughs> So yeah. we're all we're all part of this love story. Yes, <laughs> I love it. And as a fan, I think it's really something cool that they've um, mm -hmm. incorporated into the show. We have heard mm -hmm. that you didn't realize that they wanted you to be in a more involved role until you were like on set and yeah. something was changed kind of last minute in the yeah. script. Can you tell us about that? Oh my gosh. It was the scene where me and Thomas are looking onto Jesus and everybody leaving the wedding. Okay. There was one way that he filmed it where Thomas said, Jesus invited me to go with him to Samaria. And then Dallas comes over, talks to Joey, says something in his ear. And then I see both of them kind of look at me. We film it again. And Thomas now goes, he invited us to go with him to Samaria. And I was like, oh, oh, what, uh, me? Yeah. And then now I'm here. That's so talking cool. To you and I get to meet you. I love it, look I love that. it, so I crazy. love it. Yeah. He wants us to meet him in Samaria in 12 days. Well, what is it like working with the other actors and actresses? I mean, it seems like you guys have such a camaraderie and like true friendships. Yeah, we all really, it really is like, I feel like I just have so many friends mm. and it's been a blast and I've connected with so many people yeah. on such deep levels. Yeah, just that alone, just knowing that I'm gonna come out of this with some lifelong friends. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, what has been like a favorite memory on or off set? thus far in, in the in the series. Anytime on set, if it is an overnight shoot, they can be grueling to film. Yeah. Overall though, they are a blast. That's cool. Because especially when it's a night scene, those overnight ones where everyone just kind of gets delusional and a little cuckoo, <laughs> like yeah. there, it comes, there's a point in the night where it just kind of turns yeah. a little bit. People just do not care anymore. And those are, those are a blast. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Well, what has it been like for you personally to be a part of a show with this much impact? And it seems to just keep growing and growing and growing. I mean, what has it been like for you personally? It's crazy. Like I cannot, I feel like I just cannot keep up with where we are, what we're doing, who we're affecting. So anytime that I get the opportunity to, to meet one person who explains how it's impacted them. Mm -hmm. That's always cool. Seeing people here, because we have people come visit set, our supporters, and so it's nice to 
see them when their eyes light up and they get super excited and we get a chance to talk to them as well. Uh, it's it's still, I can't comprehend it. Yasmin, thank you so much. Thank you. So nice talking to you. So nice talking to and you. meeting you. Well, if anyone watches this show, you guys know that I'm a fan of The Chosen, and I'm super excited really? for the up-and-coming season. I can't tell. <laughs> I can't tell your enthusiasm at all. You seem so I know, reserved. I know. It was it was so good talking to Yasmin and just, you know, getting her perspective. And the love story between these two characters, Rayma and Thomas, is, is something obviously uh, unscripted at first, but then they kind of changed it. So it's cool to see how that dynamic is. It's a is, little extra biblical. Well, yes, and the, the writers <laughs> have said that this is you know. The amplified version. Yes, absolutely. So it's going to be it's going to be cool seeing how that relationship unfolds in the series. But that's so. part of the charm of the chosen that, that they definitely go off mm -hmm. the uh, chronicle and the four gospels uh, to to I guess flesh out the story mm -hmm. is a way to put it. Uh, yeah. But it, it's obviously pleasing to the audience. Definitely. And something else that I wanted to mention, they actually have a new docu series. It was created by the people of the chosen. It's called Jonathan and Jesus, and it's on Amazon Prime. It's a four part docu series, and it actually you know it kind of goes into how Jonathan is playing Jesus and how that might be um, kind of intimidating. Mm -hmm. But then also. It is full out a gospel presentation. It's it's telling you who Jonathan Rumi is as he's portraying Jesus, but then who Jesus is as well. So highly recommend that as well. You can find that on Amazon Prime. So they're doing good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And they're coming out with a movie. Well, the uh, the new season is coming out in theaters, which I did want to let everyone know that we're just weeks away from the premiere of season four of The Chosen. Very excited. And the director, Dallas Jenkins, has said it's far more intense and emotional than what we've ever seen before. But here's even better news. The first three episodes of season four will debut in theaters on February 1st. Tickets are on sale right now, so make sure you reserve your seats. I believe all of the episodes of season four are going to come out in theaters first before for the app, uh, so make sure you guys get your seats. It's gonna be good. Welcome back to Washington for the CBN News Break. Former President Trump is back on the campaign trail after appearing in a DC courtroom Tuesday, claiming immunity to charges brought against him involving plotting to overturn the 2020 election. An appeals court hearing Trump's attorneys claimed he should have immunity from official acts while president. A three-member panel of judges asking tough questions, including this one from Judge Florence Pan. Could a president who ordered SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival who was not impeached, would he still be subject to criminal prosecution? Trump's attorney answered, if he were impeached and convicted first. Pan's reply, so your answer is no. The court is expected to release its ruling soon due to the 2024 presidential campaign. Well, on Capitol Hill, a divided Congress is back to work and facing several big fights, including battles over government funding, foreign aid, and immigration. Congressional leaders have secured an agreement on overall spending as they try to avoid a partial government shutdown later this month. At issue, leaders leaving out border policies, pushing some House uh, conservatives to use the prospect of a government shutdown to further their efforts for border reform. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Alexis's car needed $1,800 of repairs. And what's worse, she and her husband, Cooper, only had $300 in their savings. This military couple was in a really bad situation until you came to their rescue. E4 Specialist Cooper is proud to serve in the U.S. Army. I felt like more of like a calling it really just like teaches you so much about whether it's discipline or um, it just helps you like grow up in a way. His wife Alexis appreciates his dedication to his country and his family. I'm very proud of him. He works hard to provide for our family, make sure we're happy and healthy and make sure we have everything that we need. Alexis admits being an army wife has its challenges. The toughest was when Cooper deployed for nine months, just four weeks after their wedding. Her faith played a big part in getting her through the months alone as a new bride. Praying for him over there, making sure he was safe. Soon after Cooper returned, the couple became a family of three with the arrival of their daughter. Life was good until their financial situation took a blow when Alexis's car broke down. 
They couldn't afford the $1,800 in repairs. Reliable truck is their only transportation. They knew it was just a matter of time before the truck broke down too. I feel worried. We only have $300 in savings. There's no way we can get it fixed. It's just all around just a really bad situation. Despite their predicament, the couple relied on their faith in God. I feel like he's got a plan. He's got something going like in the works for us. I don't know what it is. I don't know um, when it will happen. I'm hoping that it happens sometime soon. But I, I honestly do believe that in some way, shape or form, he's going to find some way of getting us out of it. The couple attends a local chapter of a military support organization called Cadence International, who contacted Helping the Home Front about their situation. Hey guys! Yeah. Leaders Dan and Charlotte invited them over to share some good news. CBN and Helping the Home Front, uh, in conjunction with Cadence International, they found out about your car problems and they just wanted to come alongside you and alleviate some of your stress. Thank you. We know that this burden of $1,800 is massive. And so we're just so excited to be able to share with you that CBN and Cadence is gonna pay for that. So when you go to pick up your car, it's gonna be paid for. Oh. <laughs> That's amazing. You good? Yeah. I <laughs> was not expecting that. There's more in helping Homefront and Cadence wants to honor your service and support your family by replacing your truck with a reliable used car. And there's a car dealership right now ready to take you guys in and help get you into a car so that you can have two reliable cars. That's, thank you guys so much. You okay? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you. You guys can't even imagine how much this is helping our family and our future, and I am so blessed. Cooper and Alexis headed to the car dealership, picked out a vehicle, and drove it home that day. They had Alexis's car fixed, too. Because of CBN Partners, this military couple now has two safe vehicles without a huge financial burden. Helping the home front is just such an amazing outreach program. Continue doing what y'all are doing. It's an amazing blessing that y'all have given my family. I hope Cooper and Alexis's story just puts a smile on your face like it does for mine. You know, God blesses us, not just for us to hold on to all of the blessings, whether financial or material, whatever it is. God blesses us to be a blessing unto others. And I've shared this before on the program, but my father was in the military, he was in the Navy. And military families, when you're first starting out, whether it's your father or your mother who's um, in active duty service, a lot of times there's a whole lot more month than money and my dad even had to work a second job so he was in the military full time that was his day job and then he would work on the weekends and nights at different jobs like Lowe's and Olive Garden so I personally understand that you know sometimes it's hard being in the military and being in a family where your parents serve so helping the home front is an organization that's a part of CBN where we just give back to active duty military families where we say hey we see you we love you and we want to help you out. So if you want to become a part of helping military families, but going beyond that, helping people all over the world and doing it in the name of Jesus, become a CBN partner today. A portion of your gift will go into the work of helping the home front and Operation Blessing and several other ministries that are a part of CBN. So again, if you want to do that, it's really simple. I encourage you to become a partner today. Give us a call right now, 1-800-700-7000. You can also become a partner by going to cbn.com or by texting to give, which is texting CBN to the number 71777. When you do that, you're going to get a text message with a link. You click that link and it's going to send you over to our giving page, where from there you can decide at which level you would like to become a 700 Club partner at. There's different levels. There's 700 Club level, which is just $20 a month. There's 700 Club gold, $40 a month. There's even higher levels, 1000 Club, which is $84 a month, even higher than that. And we always say we 
just ask that you prayerfully consider what God is putting on your heart. And whether you call us or go to CBN.com or text CBN to 71777, we encourage you to become a CBN partner by uh, signing up for Pledge Express. It's electronic monthly giving. It's the bank doing all the work so you don't have to write a check every month. Again, it's electronic monthly giving. And as our way of saying thank you for doing that, we're going to send you Power for Life monthly teachings. You can get this in a CD or PDF form. The one I'm holding in my hand is called The Power of Knowing Your Des Destiny. So these teachings are just going to help encourage you in your faith. So if you want all of this and you want to help people all around the world, you want to help military families become a partner today, give us a call 1-800-700-7000. Go to CBN.com or text CBN to 71777. Sophie was mere hours away from her surgery. Still, she didn't go under the knife that day or any other day. That's because Sophie was staring at something she had thought was impossible, a positive pregnancy test. Why? Why would you give me this desire if it's just going to be repeated deaths? Like, it just felt horrible. Sophie Rund still gets emotional when she thinks back on the hardships she and her husband Joe have endured. They had dreams of having a large family, but an ultrasound revealed Sophie had stage four endometriosis, a disease in the uterus causing cysts, scar tissue, and infertility. This is something that she'll have her entire life. And from that diagnosis, you know, both understood that, you know, the life that we ourselves had planned um, was gonna look a little different. I remember coming home to her parents' house, actually, and we just went up to, went up to her room and both just cried for hours. <laughs> Just not really knowing, um, you know, what the future was going to hold. Sophie had laparoscopic surgery to remove the cysts in her uterus, which would make getting pregnant a possibility. So I had family and friends praying for me through that. When the surgery came, like, I just knew that it was going to be a doorway to ultimately a family. So I was like, I'll do anything. I had the surgery and it was super successful. Four months after surgery, Sophie was pregnant. They soon welcomed their son, Brooks, into the world. The labor and delivery and even the whole pregnancy was just amazing. Like, the process was so smooth and quick and just an awe of, like, the perfect little seven-pound guy. Hoping their troubles were behind them, they soon tried to have a second child. Unfortunately, a series of miscarriages dampened their hopes for adding to their family. I just remember just laying on my bathroom floor, just pretty hopeless. To know that that can be like a repeated thing was just like, how do I really move on? They returned to her doctor for another exam. Now more bad news. The endometriosis had returned and was worse than before. Cysts and a blocked fallopian tube made getting pregnant impossible. I was just a mess and I went upstairs and I just laid flat on my face and I was like, Lord, like I today am giving this to you. This was like a change of heart, like almost my desire for Jesus and what he wanted became bigger than my desire for a big family. In that moment, I got up and I just saw the world differently, like the, and I still like I've never gone back. They planned to start in vitro fertilization which would require Sophie to have her fallopian tubes removed, preventing her ability to conceive naturally. Once again, they asked for prayer from friends and family. Then a Christian friend shared a dream she'd had about Sophie. The dream was that my sister and I were pregnant together, and she's like, you were really close. We were celebrating with our family and friends. We had like a big baby shower, and we were just big and pregnant together. And I was like, that gave me hope. I'm like, well, maybe IVF will work the first time, and we'll get to be pregnant together. With a renewed sense of hope, they scheduled the IVF procedure. Then, the night before the surgery, you know what, I'm just gonna take a pregnancy test because you just never know. I had seen so many negative tests that I'm like, I know it'll be negative, but just wanna like rule it out. And I looked down and I was like, oh my, I mean, it was the most pre positive pregnancy test. I was like, oh my, I screamed. I woke up the whole house. I'm pre I was supposed to be at the hospital like five hours later 
to report him for surgery. And I was like, well, oh my God. And I, I truly, based on the ultrasound, like this was impossible. It looked impossible. Then at her next ultrasound, Sophie was given miraculous confirmation regarding the cysts and blocked fallopian tube. I see in your chart that you had those and I'm not seeing any on your, she's like, you're over it. Like everything looks great and normal. And I'm like, oh my, and Joe was with me and I'm just looking at him. She could even tell the side the baby implanted on, which was the side that was blocked, my left side. And so it was just that after that scan, I remember that was at eight weeks. I remember being like, this is a true miracle. Like the cysts are gone. Like these have to be surgically removed. They don't just go away. Months later, Sophie delivered Palmer Hope, a healthy baby girl. Today, she is a reminder that God still performs miracles and hears the cries of our hearts. I remember when we like locked eyes for the first time and it was just like, it, she instantly calmed and I, was, I just felt like I had known her forever. Like it was just such a, I'll never forget that moment. It was such a special moment and I have treasured every single day with her. You know, I think what both Sophie and I learned is, you know, just to put our, our trust, put our hope in the Lord, and, um, you know, He's blessed us tremendously. The fact that He cares about me and my life that much, like, I'm just so thankful that He healed me and brought me these two beautiful babies. Like, I just can't, I cannot believe it. Really, it's just a reminder every time we look at her, you know, her laugh, her giggle, you know, that's, that's the Lord and that's the gift that He's given us, thankfully, um, to love and cherish for the rest of our lives. I'm just so thankful every day. And I've just seen the goodness of the Lord so tangibly that it has just changed my life forever. What an incredible story. It just brings a smile to my face. The God, what He does for us, how He loves us so and how he always shows up on time. Now, what was the key for Sophie to get that miracle? And it'll be a key for you. You, you can use the same key. Uh, they, they open doors, they, they turn locks and open things up. For her, it was coming to the re realization that her desire for Jesus had to exceed her desire for a family. She had a moment, and it was right in her own home, but in that moment, she realized, I'm holding on to something that's actually interfering with what I should be holding on to. Now, when you get Jesus in your life, when you have him first in your life, you actually get everything. And, and so often it's hard for us to really wrap our heads around that. He is the author and finisher of everything. He is the Alpha and Omega. And when you have him, you have everything you need. Now, he wants to give that to you, but he wants your heart to be first on him. That's why he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. It's not our own righteousness. It's a righteousness that comes only from him. And when you put him first to say, God, whatever you have for me, whatever it is, I'm all in. I, I want you um, more than anything else. When you put your heart's desires on other things, and they can be material things, or they can be family things, they can be uh, idols. And, and when you have that idol in your life, you're actually blocking Jesus from, from moving on your behalf. You've put something else in place, and you're saying, well, if I have this, then I'll be happy. When you have Jesus, you'll be really happy. You'll have everything. So put him first. We're going to pray. Before we pray, here's some other miracles. Here's Dawn from Carpentersville, Illinois, if I'm pronouncing that right. She had severe back pain while doing laundry, even slight movements, walking, driving, triggered excruciating pain. Over-the-counter medicines didn't help, so Dawn saw an orthopedic specialist who scheduled an MRI. A few days before the appointment, she was watching the 700 Club, and Ashley said, 
declare special anointing for back problems. Well, Dawn believed the word was for her. The next morning, she had no pain when she got out of bed. Pain never returned. She canceled her MRI and is giving all glory to the great physician. That's amazing. Here's another amazing answer to prayer. For about six months, Dawn of Albuquerque, New Mexico, dealt with sev severe nasal drainage. It went on 24-7 with no let-up. While watching the 700 Club on December 18, 2023, he heard Gordon say, someone else, you've got polyps in the right side of the sinus cavities in your face and primarily in the cheek. God has healed you, and you just felt that healing go through with that infection infection, inflammation, and all the pain, all of that is gone now in the name of Jesus. Don immediately claimed the healing for himself. He happily reports his healing manifested instantly, and the constant drainage stopped. He's praising the Lord. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, we come to you, and we declare we want you first in our lives. We don't want to look at other things. We don't want to look at the things of the world. We, we don't want to look at troubles. We don't want to look at symptoms. We don't want to look at all the things that we think we're missing, because you're the main thing. You're the only thing. So we seek you and your righteousness and your presence. Lord God Almighty, come invade us. Fill us to overflowing, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Ashley, God's given you something. Yeah, there's two things. The first thing is a, is a word of the Lord. You know, you will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. So just declare that over your life today. The second thing is there's a child and maybe even an adult suffering from severe hands, foot, and mouth. You've got blisters on your hands, on your feet, and in your mouth, and also the child as well. And I just believe God is literally healing you from this severe illness as well as the child in the name of Jesus. It will be a miraculous and speedy recovery from that. There's someone you're suffering with a cyst or a mass um, in the upper right part of your torso, just below your collarbone, your shoulder bone. God's going to dissolve that for you, and he is going to take that completely away. You just felt a touch go into it. In the name of Jesus, may it be gone and leave you forevermore. Someone else you've suffered from a, a, a car accident, and in that you had severe strain to your neck, You've got shooting pain going up into your skull and down your back. God's healing you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you've been touched and you've been healed, let us know. Let us share your good report. All you have to do is call us. 1-800-700-7000. Here's a word from Matthew. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. God bless. We'll see you again. In the last five minutes of my labor and delivery was when I noticed something was